In this video, I'm going to share with you top tips to significantly reduce your Excel file size. So for the first tip, saving your Excel file in binary format. That's the XSLB format. So when you save your Excel file with the default compressed format, .xlsx, that's XML based, and it's only needed if you're sharing your Excel data with third party programs, since XML is an open standard and it's created for sharing. However, mostly the Excel binary format is sufficient save to a significantly small file. And if you save from your old uncompressed .xls format to the binary format, it's even better. So we've got a file here, big sales data, and it's in the compressed format, the default format. And when you save it from the drop down, when you choose the binary format, that's how you do it. So for example, we've got three files, they're exactly the same, but they're saved in three different formats. The first one is in the compressed format, the second one is in the super compressed format, and lastly, the one at the end, dot .xls, that's in the old uncompressed format. And you can see the file sizes. So when you look at the different formats and the file size and the reduction, so for the uncompressed format, it's 2505. The compressed format is, goes down to 845. That's a 66% reduction. But if you go from the old uncompressed less format to the super compressed binary format, it's even better goes down to 556 kilobytes, a 78% reduction. In this next step, I'm going to show you how you can delete excess empty rows and columns, which also help you save your next cell file size. So if you go to your last visible data row, and in the next blank row, press on your keyboard, select the first empty row, the combination keys of shift and spacebar, then you press shift, control, downward arrow, together at the same time and then finally you right click and select delete and that delete all the excess empty rows to delete the excess empty columns you go to your last visible data column and in the next blank column press on your keyboard to select the first empty column so this time it's going to be a combination of the keys control and spacebar then you press shift control and then right arrow and then you right click and you select delete and next, I'm going to show you how you can do this. I'm just going to give you a demonstration. This Excel worksheet has additional rows and columns. Now, when you look at the, the last data row, it looks like the last data row is 9995, and the last column is column Q. When you press Control N, Excel thinks that the last data row is row a million, and the last column is BU. So, all these additional rows and columns are unnecessarily contributing to the file size. So what we need to do is we need to delete it. To delete extra rows, we need to click on any cell next to the last dataset row and then press shift spacebar. That's going to select the entire row. Then on your keyboard press control shift download arrow and that's going to select the, the rest of the empty rows. Then we just right click and then select delete. That will delete all the extra rows. To delete extra columns, we need to click on any cell next to the last dataset column, then press Control spacebar, that's going to select the entire column. Then we press the combination of Control shift then right arrow, that's going to select the rest of the columns, the maximum number of columns, which is column XFD. Then we simply right click and select the delete option, and that's going to delete all the extra columns. And the last thing we need to do is to save the Excel file and then Excel then recognizes the true last dataset row and last dataset column. Your next tip is compress picture objects. Click on each image, picture object, and Excel will display a picture tool format menu similar to this. And you'll have a tool on the left hand side called compress pictures. And if you click on compress pictures, you can choose how much you wish to compress a picture image. From the same area in the same picture tool format menu, you also have a remove background tool in the picture tool. Remove an image background if you wish. So for example, this Excel file has a number of pictures in them. So what you need to do is for each picture, click on it. And then on the top, you're gonna see a picture tools menu appearing. So click on that. And then over to the left, you're gonna have all these tools relating to pictures. One of them is called compressed pictures. And if you click on that, this compressed pictures dialog box appears and then you can choose how much you want to compress the picture and then for the option and then click on OK. 
Here's your last part tip to save on Excel file size, and that's to unhide and delete hidden names. Sometimes when your Excel workbook is shared, and different people open, edit, save and close it, what Excel does in the background is to create hidden name ranges, which can't be seen when opening the name manager from the Excel menu. Instead, the only way to reveal these hidden names is to use some Excel VBA code which I have developed and I'll share with you so you can check it on your own Excel workbooks. You may be surprised. So here's the Excel VBA code and it works like this. First, we dimension a variable n and we're going to save it as name. Then we're going to use a for each loop and we're going to check all the names in the active workbook. And we're going to check for each name, we're going to check the visibility property. And if it's false, we're going to make it true. Doing it that way, we're going to make it visible. And then the last part of the VBA code, it opens the standard name manager, and then you'll be able to see all your names, which were invisible before, but can now become visible. This Excel workbook contains visible and invisible name ranges. To see the visible name ranges, you need to go into the Formulas tab and click on Name Manager. And in the Name Manager dialog box, you'll be able to see the visible name ranges. To see the invisible ones, you'll need VBA code. So to do that, you need to go into the Developer tab and click on Visual Basic. Then in any of these objects, right click, click on Insert, and click on Module to enter a insert a standard module and then you paste this code and minimize this VBA window then go into the developer tab again and click on macros and then run the unhide hidden names macro run it and here you can see not only the visible name ranges but the invisible name ranges that are now become visible and what you can do is you can view each one review each one and decide if you want to keep it or delete it and if you want to delete it you click on this delete button here and click on OK.